That's history right there, you understand? What's up, everybody? So, I've been wanting to do this on the channel for a long time. This is the first Tatermeister movie re-review. That's right. So, here's the original link to uh, my original review of Uncut Gems. When I first reviewed Uncut Gems, the first day I watched it, I was, uh, I didn't like it that much. <laughs> I mean... A lot of people were, like, confused by that. They were like, what, Tate? You didn't like it that much. I mean, I did like it, but I didn't think it was, like, all that in a bag of chips. Now, I've had a chance to rewatch the movie. I've had a chance to grow with it and rewatch the clips and, you know, think about the movie for a while. Because, uh, to be fair, Uncut Gems is a very different kind of movie. <laughs> and I can say for certain now, I love Uncut Gems <laughs> with all my heart. Now... What, what what I mean? It's funny how in the old review I was saying that uh, Howard didn't have character de character development. Now I have character development. <laughs> now look, what I said in those in the old review kind of still stands. I mean, the movie is a little convoluted. The movie is a little lacking in the character development area, but <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> look, Uncut Gems is iconic. Look, I mean. I mean, I guess one of the reasons I wanted to do this re-review, this first one, is because when I did the Uncut Gems, like, ending song thing, it, it, that, that video that I did for me dancing to the song did help me love the movie more. And I come to appreciate the film a lot more. Now that I've seen it the second time, I can appreciate it a lot more now. Because I realized that the, the FD brothers weren't really trying to make a very you know, traditional kind of movie when they meet Uncut Gems. And I haven't really seen Good Time all the way yet, so I haven't, I have to watch that later, but... Um, when it comes to Uncut Gems, it's become a cultural phenomenon. This movie is, like, all over the place. Like, when it first got on Netflix, it became number one. Like, this movie's a cultural phenomenon. It's an iconic movie already, and it's only, like, um, like a f half a year old, and it's taken over the world. Like, people are quoting it, people are memeing it, people are, like... You know, they really love this movie, and I can say I love the movie now, too. It's it's really a piece of cultural significance. This movie just... I mean, this, this review is going to contain spoilers. I mean, duh, it's a re-review. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, please click off. But this is a re-review. This will have spoilers. But, um... Anyway, so... I mean, when I first watched the movie, when, when Howard died at the end, it, it did trip me out. I'm not going to lie. But... Honestly, it makes watching the movie again a lot more fulfilling because you appreciate the film a lot more when you've seen the ending and you know that he dies at the end. You're kind of like, okay, I appreciate that. I want to I wanna rewatch. I love these moments more because it's like, it's kind of like how life is. Life can end at any moment, but you enjoy the ride, you know? And also, I think the movie's message is pretty clear. Don't mess with people's money. Don't gamble. Don't do stupid crap or it's going to come back and bite you. I think that was the message of Uncut Gems, but... I mean, to be fair, it's kind of like the same feeling I had with when I watched Wrecking for a Dream the first time. <laughs> I didn't like Wrecking for a Dream very much when I watched it the first time. I don't think anybody does when they watch Wrecking for a Dream the first time. But, no, I love it. And I think between Wrecking for a Dream and, and Uncut Gems, they're trippy, very intense, very insane movies. But, you admire the art and passion that the directors put into those films. Both Wrecking for a Dream and Uncut Gems. Both iconic movies. Both with iconic music. Now, I kind of feel like this is the, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, Uncapped is not as crazy as Wrecking for a Dream, obviously, but this definitely feels like the Wrecking for a Dream Citizen Kane of this generation. Uncut Gems is an uncut gem. It's a cut, it's a, it's a gem, really. Maybe some people won't like it as much. Maybe some people will get confused, but in the end, this movie has solidified its cultural significance, its cultural iconic significance to the, to the film culture. It's. It's gonna be referenced forever. And the fact that it didn't get nominated for Best Picture or, or Adam Sandler got nominated for Best Actor is truly a crime. I mean, this movie is just awesome. From the cinematography, from the music, from the storytelling, from the, you know, even the writing. Now, I got on the writing in the in the, my first review. I, did, I said the writing wasn't good, but to be fair, I think it's because I just didn't understand with the writing. It was just a very, when I watched Uncut Gems the first time, I was just very confused. I was like, oh, why? What was the point? But as I've come to think about it, and I've come to, you know, rewatch it again, and rewatch the clips again, and 
I've come to understand it a lot better, and I really love the movie. It's just a really fun, dope. Oh, sorry, my mic fell. It's just a really fun, dope, awesome time, and it's really great to rewatch. The rewatch value is a ten out of ten easily. But as far as the writing goes, I'll give it a nine out of ten. The writing is awesome. You might not like it at first, but it grows on you. Um, the music is a ten out of ten. Clearly, I mean, <laughs> the music's just perfect. Um. The direction is a 9 out of 10. The Safdie brothers are just unique filmmakers. They are truly great. The acting is 9 out of 10. I, I would give it 10 out of 10, but there's parts where the acting isn't as good. Mainly from the other acting. Adam Sandler's acting is 10 out of 10. I don't get why he wasn't nominated. Honestly, should have took one of the... They should have traded some of the nominations out for Afro Uncut Gems, but hey, Oscars, whatever, screw you. Um, Let me see what else. Um... I think that's all the categories I can do for it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Editing, I guess, is like an 8 out of 10? I don't know. Uh, that's about it. So, overall, Uncut Gems is phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> what was wrong with me the first time? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I guess I just really didn't understand the movie at first. It was very... I still am confused about it, but now I love it for confusing me because th that many movies can do that to me. Uncut Gems just trips me out, and it, it, it's great for that reason. It's just unlike any other film experience. So, with all that being said, on this re review, Uncut Gems is now a 9.8 out of 10. Yeah. Turn on the song, baby. Alright, so that was my Uncut Gems And as you can see, I love the movie now. It's grown on me a lot. It's definitely one of my favorite movies of 2019 now, and the, and I can just rewatch it over and over. It's honestly great. <laughs> it just gets better each time. But anyway guys, it's Tatermeister signing out, and we'll see you on the next video. Stupid hair. Bye bye <laughs>